Hey horror fans, welcome back to Room 237. After another long week of not doing videos. Sorry, I'm still getting used to how things are around here. But anyway, I figured I'd um, do sort of a random review. Uh, this is, I guess, my first kind of a, a request. This movie's been brought up in the comments by a few people. And that is 2005's House of Wax. Which is a remake of the 1953 or 55 Vincent Price film House of Wax. Or a loose remake. But even that is a remake of the 33 film Mystery of the Wax Museum. And I've always liked this movie. I mean, it has a lot of hallmarks of things that I don't like about horror. Remake. Other things I'll get into. But I've always liked this. I saw it when it first came out. I would have been in about 7th or 8th grade. My parents rented it. We watched it. Then I didn't see it again for years. Sometime after high school. And then a while after that I saw it again. And then I, I bought it. I've always liked this. You know, it came out in 2005. And, you know... This is one of the better remakes. This is a case where I could say a remake is acceptable. You know, even though the one from the 50s is a Vincent Price film, it's still probably a B movie, probably forgotten about. So, yeah, remake it. You know, it's not like there was a 80s film, House of Wax, that, you know, a lot of people liked. That That's when remakes are stupid. Normally, you know, like sort of like The Fog, it, one of the problems I would normally have is it has a CW cast. I mean, hell, it has Chad Michael Murray, who was in... He wasn't in the OC. I can't remember the other uh, pretty teen school show he was in. Uh, one Tree Hill, this one he was in. Uh, uh, Jared Padalecki, Alicia Cuthbert, Paris Hilton... So it does have a pretty cast, but I like the care. It has good characters, except Paris Hilton. But Paris Hilton gets the best death. I think that's one reason why people like this. So, uh, so uh, right off the bat, so these group of friends, which is Alicia Cuthbert, she plays Carly. Her twin brother is Chad Michael Murray. She's the good twin. He's the evil twin. He's always in trouble with the cops or whatever. He's the wrong side of the tracks. Kind of like the kid from OC. It At times, it feels like an episode of the OC. Don't ask me how I know about the OC. You know, Paris Hilton, her boyfriend, who was... I remember from uh, Nickelodeon years. I can't even... The one where his cousin's like a Muppet. And this other guy, he he was uh, Anna Ferris's boyfriend in the first scary movie. And of course, he's the comic relief. They're trying to get to this college football game. They pull over for the night to camp out. <clears throat> anyway, it's, uh, I'm just going to go through because I think a lot of people have seen this. I mean, it's been asked about uh, in, in my comments for a few times. There's some car trouble, so they... They got to split up. They got to go to the town no one knows about. And the whole town, you know, it's a very small, like, one-street town. Like, gas station, church, theater. And then a big attraction called House of Wax. Where everything is wax. Like, even the house itself. And, you know, from there, it's basically this guy... At first we see him, he's the priest, but he also owns the gas station. He kind of looks like, uh, I've seen him before, I want to say like a Michael Riley Burke, the guy that played Ted Bundy in Ted Bundy, the, the 2002 film. Which, he looks like a serial killer. He did a good job with his role. And his twin, uh, Vincent, you know, it opens up with you know this old black and white footage of these twin boys you can't see from here up but one's eating cereal 
and the other one they have to fight with to restrain in a high chair while they make masks, uh, wax masks. You find out they were conjoined twins. Vincent, his face was conjoined to the back of Bo's head. Bo's the name of the other one. So now he wears, like, wax. And their parents, you know, her mother was known for wax sculpting. Their father was a doctor that separated them. And anyway, so now they're these serial killers that take people off the interstate and they turn them into wax figures. That's And from... Aside from that, it's basically a slasher film. And, you know, even though it has what would be a forgettable, irritating, pretty CW cast. I mean, Chad Michael Murray, he, uh, I never saw the show he was in. He actually has some good scenes. Uh, Alicia Cuthbert, I've seen here and there. I've never seen that girl next door, um sort of like sex comedy that came out shortly before this I thought she did a great job I mean she gets the hell beat out of her in this movie and she's not afraid to get messy and bloody I thought she did a great job uh, it also kind of reminds me of Chainsaw Massacre old and new because it's like people from the city well they make jokes that Jared Padalecki's from the country and he might have to go to New York. So they kind of make jokes about that. Jared Padalecki is Alicia Cuthbert's uh, boyfriend. And so Chainsaw Massacre, it's like... So you have these people from the city. They're at this small town. And they fall victim. You know, or same with Wrong Turn. But it's not just serial killers. There's a twist. Like in Chainsaw Massacre, they were cannibals. Here they're building wax figures and they actually went through with it like they showed how they do it and it's pretty disturbing and original i mean it is rated r it it's a very soft r it, it feels like a hard pg-13 but also like the chainsaw massacre remake jared Pedalecki, you think he's like the male lead you know he's dating the female lead and he's the first to go and, you know, he's taken by Vincent. He's given a, a, a sedative so he can't move. He gets his facial hair waxed off. Then he's put in this contraption that just showers molten wax all over him. And then later on when you see him, you know, he's all made up with clothes and everything. And, like, his eyes are still moving and he's trying to moan because he can't move his lips. So when the scary movie guy tries to get the wax off, he's actually ripping his skin off, and you see tears. Like, that wasn't fairly original. I thought that was a nice touch. Another touch that was one of my favorite things, and it's very subtle. Because, obviously, by this point, you find out the whole town is like this. Like, there's, like, puppies in the pet store. There were tails to wagon. There's an old lady in like a nightgown and curlers opening a curtain. It's all rigged. They're all wax figures. All the people in the church are wax figures. Because before, you just get quick glimpses. Like, just enough to make it look like people reacting to something. And, um... So, by this point, it's just the Chad Michael Murray and Alicia Cuthbert. They're hiding in the theater. And Bo, who's like the, the... Also, there's the parallel of twins, I guess. You know, you have our leads who are twins and then the villains who are twins. And they play on the whole good twin, bad twin thing. So they're hiding in the movie theater. And I don't know if this was scripted or if this was something the actor brought to it. Either way, I thought it was very clever and a very subtle touch that helped the scene. Bo comes in with a shotgun, and you see him going, like, like, he's counting all the wax figures. So, like, he knows how many figures are, like, he knows every space of that town. So, like, he, so if they're hiding, he'll know that there's an extra head or something in there. I thought that was a well, well done touch. Also, you know, they're they're smart characters. You no, know, not the whole group isn't smart. I mean, the scary movie guy, he's kind of a dweeb. 
but you know Murray and Cuthbert, they they fight back. They're resourceful. Like you know, they go down to the gun store. There's no guns in there, but he takes a crossbow, and he has this great line, which because he wants to throw something through the window so they can get in. And she's like, "Oh, make noise! They'll, he'll find us." And he's like, "Well, at least with this, he won't want to find us." Grabs a crossbow, and then that the bow comes out with a shotgun. Um, of course, Paris Hilton's death. I will say, and this is going to kill me to say this, you know, when Paris Hilton is running around screaming, she's at least mentally competent enough to act. You know, I, I have to give her that. I think this movie was very self-aware of Paris Hilton. I mean, this was 2005. This was after her stupid reality show. This was after her sex tape. You know, this would have been season nine, uh, nine of South Park and Stupid Spoiled Whore Playset. The Paris Hilton episode was in season eight. Because there's a scene with her and her boyfriend. Because there's this subplot where she might be pregnant. She hasn't told him yet. He's trying to be intimate with her. So she kind of stops him so she can talk to him. But then she does a strip tease. Only to go back to kissing him to stop him to talk. It was the movie's excuse to get her to do a striptease. That's all it was. But on the flip side of that coin, they gave her the most gruesome death. I think because they knew the world's kind of sick of Paris Hilton. And they don't... And, you know, she had to go out in a good way. Which she does. You know, fucking metal pole to the head. And she falls, lands on it, slides down. Also... Her boyfriend, had, when he's on the ground with a knife in his neck. And normally what happens? She runs off, you see the killer walk up, grab the knife, he dies. No, killer doesn't even grab the knife. Just walks up, just does this casual little step on it and just keeps going after her. I know this review is kind of all over the place, but... And this is one of those movies where it's kind of forgotten. Nobody really talks about it, but when they do... They like it. I think this got fairly good reviews. Um, uh, uh, Robert Zemeckis produced this. Wow, okay. So that's awesome. Uh, yeah, this was produced by Dark Castle, which they also did Gothica and Ghost Ship. Not very good movies. <laughs> um, the effects... Okay, so the effects, there is a lot of CGI. There is. And some of it's kind of dated, some of it kind of looks good. No, the whole third act is pretty intense. I mean, you know, there's a fire in the House of Wax. It's all coming down. And so, you know, it started in the basement, so it's all just like a, a pool of molten wax that you can fall in. And, you know, I thought it was intense. Uh, it, well done, well acted. There is a lot of CGI. That's the point I'm getting to with the effects. And watching the features, I have mad respect for them because they said, you know, we want this to be as realistic as possible. We understand to do that. You have to do it practically. And we only want to use CGI for when we absolutely cannot do it practically. Which there were some stuff. Like when you see Vincent's real face. Like this is all messed up. That CGI. But you see it very quickly. So it's not too bad. You know. I don't really want to go through every little effect. But the CGI isn't that bad. You know it's kind of forgivable. I mean it's a big fucking wax house melting. But, you know, it looks good for 2005. That I can give it. And then, you know, spoilers for anyone who hasn't seen it. But there is a twist, but it doesn't feel like a Shyamalan twist. It's not really, a, you know, a, a sequel bait. Because in the beginning when they're camping, there's this bad smell. And nearby, there's like a pit of all these dead animals, like roadkill. And there's this guy played by... I always forget his name. 
uh, uh, Damon Harriman. He's a character actor. You've probably seen him before in a ton of stuff. He's actually playing Charles Manson in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, which I'm seeing tomorrow. So you'll get a review of that tomorrow. I'm a big Tarantino fan. So, you know, he's like this stereotypical, creepy, backwoods hick that gives uh, Cuth Burton uh, a Pedalecki a ride into town. But he's nice. You know, you kind of feel bad for him because they treat him like a freak. And he's like, well, go on, just trying to be nice. You find out that the family of Vincent and Bo didn't have three, uh, two sons. They had three. And, you know, then it shows him. But you see him in the very beginning. And through everything that happens, you kind of forget about it. And, you know, obviously he's not a wax guy. He's not a sculptor. So he's not going to carry on the reign of terror or anything. Just... So, it was a subtle but effective twist that I thought was done well. You know, everything... This is definitely a diamond in the rough of, like, the mid-early 2000s CW remake. With, you know, the pretty cast, CGI, soft R rating. Could have been PG-13. You know, it's, they say fuck a couple times, but it's not overly gory. But, you know, it pulled it off. This could have been just another Fog remake, which came out the same year. But it wasn't. People, like, they literally made the whole house out of wax. You watch the features, like, there are people sculpting everything. They made the whole town. So, you know, there's definitely effort put into it. And they did try to make it look as real as possible. I do wish since, I guess the only real complaint I could have was, even though I'm a huge slasher film fan, if you have an angle where you're turning people into wax figures, they went more that route because it gets to a point where it's just a slasher film. Like, some of the characters are just killed off. You don't see what happens to them or afterward. It would have been cool to see more of the friends turn into wax figures Be and also uh i thought this was also um ba based on like a twilight zone episode uh, i know there is a, a wax figure episode in twilight zone it's one of my favorite shows ever this actually feels more like a twilight zone movie than the actual twilight zone movie which is just an anthology of remade episodes but, um, yeah, along with Planet of the Apes, which was written by Rod Serling, this feels like, you know, an edgy uh, Twilight Zone episode, which I consider a compliment. That's probably the best compliment that I can give this. But, yeah, usually in movies like this, the villain or the killer is not believable or good or even intimidating. The guy that played Bo did a very good job. You know, he looked and acted like a serial killer. Especially the part... Well, this doesn't have anything to do with being a killer. Just the acting was well done. When he... Chad Michael Murray shot him with some arrows. So he has to pull him out and just... He acted the pain very well. He threw up from the pain. Well done. I mean... It's the same guy that plays the twin Vincent, even though you can't, you can only see like th this much of his face at one point. He does sort of do the same thing that a lot of silent killers do, just a lot of like head turns. But <clears throat> yeah, I thought this was a well done remake, a remake of an old fifties movie that not many people may have heard of. That's acceptable for remakes. It took, you know, a pretty cast, but I, I'm i even giving props to Paris Hilton, for fuck's sake. Only the part when, you know, she's running through the, you know, warehouse of all the cars. And, you know, you, you buy that she's scared. Which also, real quick about that. I like how there's this room with all suitcases and boxes of cell phones. Like, where they just put everyone's shit. Of who who they killed over the years, but yeah, 
fun, well done. The, even though it has things that I would rip apart and hate in other movies, CGI, a, a pretty cast, etc. It's all done well in this. And uh, I would highly recommend it. Especially if you're a fan of Twilight Zone. You know, just... It's one of those things you don't see a lot in horror movies. Like, what if you were... Like, your skin was fused and turned into wax. So you literally could not move. You couldn't blink. You couldn't speak. But you're still, like... You know, aware and everything. Like... When the friend is trying to get him out, but he's just picking skin off, and it's all blood and meat. Vincent, you know, like, slashes with his knife, and he misses, and he cuts some off. You just see the eyes roll back in his head. So, yeah, I, I've gone on too long for this. So, for the few people that left comments asking me about this, I can't remember your names. I'm sorry, but this is for you. I, I've always enjoyed this movie. Always have a good time with it. And I hope you enjoyed my review. And to the rest of you, uh, thank you for watching.